Hey guys, Rich with Rich Rebuilds here, and a few weeks ago I took a trip to California to visit my friend Simone to work on a really cool Tesla project together. Check out Cheese Louise, her electric cheese-shaped car, and sit down with Joe Rogan for three hours to talk about robots, my stand-up career, and again, Tesla. Now, while I was out in California, I wanted to see what the electric vehicle scene was like out there, and one of my stops was to visit Michael at EV West, one of the West Coast premier EV conversion shops. I want to get a closer look as to how an EV conversion shop is run, current projects like his Tesla powered Porsche, and several other VW offerings, and what the future looks like for his shop. So hit that subscribe button and let's talk to Michael and see what he had to say. All right, here we go. We're live. Look busy. Yeah. Michael. <laughs> how you Rich, doing, buddy? What's up, bud? Nice, nice to meet, to meet you, man. you. So let's yeah. so let's just see what kind of operation you have going on here because I heard so many things about you online. It's awesome to actually come here and see oh, thanks, what you guys have going on in person. Yeah. I know you guys are the West Coast place to go effectively <laughs> for any kind of EV conversion. So tell me what you have in your shop. What's in your shop today? What's the plan for now? What things do you have in the works and what's the plan for the future? Yeah, so you see our shop here. We're obviously a classic car shop. Uh, we rely heavily on integrating the Tesla parts, uh, mainly because of the value, right? You're able to buy really expensive, high quality engineered parts at a fraction of the cost of new ones. So that's where our kind of Tesla tie-in is and with you, you know, wrecking all the Teslas to bring the parts in. Right, right. right. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. you probably need some of the other bits that we don't I use, do, right? I do need a lot of We're stuff. We're literally just pretty much charger, batteries, and motors. And motors, right. Yeah, for the most part. Okay. Accelerator pedal, some few other smalls. But other than right. that, for the most part, uh, we pass the car along at right. that point. Um, it's like recycling. Which is exactly is. what we do. It yeah. is. It's the best form of recycling because you're not like destroying it and then trying to make something else out of it. You're just like, hey, I'll use that as is. Uh, we All do, right. you know, obviously the push the whole reversible conversion, not making any permanent changes to the chassis, mm -hmm. the body or anything like that. So you see a lot of those in here. Uh, over here we have uh, Ewan McGregor's 1954 Oval Window Beetle. Wait, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. I know him as a motorcycle guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But most of the younger folks know him as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, but you can see in here, this is all bolted into the factory transaxle, the side plates are in the uh, engine tin gasket. We still have some work to do with some upholstery and some finish work, but the main thing is there's no metal cut back here, right? So it's all original and the original gas engine can be put back in and mm -hmm. you know put to its kind of restored condition. Right. Uh, you can see we've got some Tesla modules in the back there. We've got some Tesla modules in the factory location up front. Um, some safety wiring cut off, BMS, internal fuses. So we really try and replicate what Tesla does with the batteries by putting uh, in an internalized BMS and monitoring systems as well as uh, fusing. 911s over here, we've got one that has our transaxle base kit. So okay. that's a more stock power, stock setup. Right. And then we have our Tesla subframe replacement. I think I want to see this one a little yeah, bit more detail. It's pretty neat. It's got a uh, full bolt in. So this whole carrier right here bolts in. It's got an enclosed uh, LG Kim battery pack, front yep. and rear. We have a combined 32 kilowatt hour. It's got the BMS and the contactors all in there. And then the drive unit sits in here with our, uh, you know, all the replaceable parts and the pump parts and the mounting architecture. We have the 930 CV flanges, so mm -hmm. they can bolt right in. So you could just kind of unbolt this whole thing right out right, of the car if yeah. you need to. We put it in, in fact, you can kind of see the marks here from the table. We'll put it on the table, roll the table in, and drop the lift on it. Right. And installation time of the actual hardware is only about five minutes. Um, when we're done with this kit, this is going to be the weekend kit. Right. You know, you're going to have a box up front, you're going to run some cables to the back and some signal wires. Right. And uh, you and a, a friend should be able to convert a 911 in the weekend. I'm going to put that to the test. And, and, it's, and it's Tesla power too, right? right. So, yeah. Because like, the thing that we keep getting from our Porsche friends is uh, they keep getting beat in stoplight to stoplight races by right. Teslas. Right. So, yeah, we have the battery box in the rear for the LG cam, and then we also have the, uh, the rear subframe for the. Uh, the Tesla drive unit. So you also yeah. sell a box up front? Yeah, we have a box, box up front. front. We can show you, we'll bring this car down. It looks okay. like the rain's let up so weird. Awesome. Richie, yeah. Richie brought us rain. I know, I, know. I did the rain <laughs> the dance before I got here. Right? All right. So uh, yeah, that and then, you know, again, it's a lot of the little small stuff, the little coolant port adapter and the uh, Heim on the side and a lot of the little things that it takes to kind of take a factory mounting system that Tesla uses and make it a little bit more small and compact to fit in more applications. Gotcha, and then what's the deal with this one right here? This is not so Tesla this is No, yet, this correct? is not Tesla, this is a Reinhardt controller on top of a, uh, actual, this has an ED West motor in it. We were kind of manufacturing our own motors for a little bit. Yep. And 
Um, we're not really doing that anymore because we've just decided it's better for us to focus on the engineering and the whole kind of solution. And uh, we've got some really good motor manufacturers as our partners. And so this was just kind of like a test bed. It was done in his internal project. And now it seems like pretty much everybody that has a, a Porsche wants more power. And so we're Absolutely. almost exclusively going- Because those cars are under power from the start. Right, yeah. right. right. This, this system as is, uh, parts wise is about twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars and a fully furnished Tesla system is about twenty three ish twenty four ish right. so there's not that much of a difference especially when this peaks at about a hundred kilowatt and this peaks at about four hundred kilowatt kilowatts. so it's it's uh, you know bang for the buck it's tough to sell a system like this this is a car that I built for myself and then uh, proceeded to sell oh this one yeah when I get off it came around so I'm kind oh, of just got some polished stuff on it but there's a vanity plate that covers all this stuff. I, uh, I wouldn't hide this at all. This is freaking fantastic. Well, so this is an air conditioning system. It's typically what we wouldn't put in a car because it's right. not very sexy. But right. yeah. uh, the nice thing is, is typically these older cars, especially this being a 912, has the four-cylinder. No one would really recommend an air conditioner because it... It, it, it robs too much, much power. Yeah, right. It robs right. the power. It overheats the engine. It's an air-cooled engine to begin with. So once you go electric, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I can do electric power steering assist, electric heater, electric right. air conditioner. You can have a lot of these conveniences of modern cars just by having the 400 volt battery in there. So, right. yeah. so in our next bay, uh, this is a 63 single cab. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the famous oh, split like window single work. cab. Very yeah, cool. thanks man. Very that was cool. done by Tim Leventry. He's a great uh, vintage painter. Okay. Uh, all the logos on this are original. So they were all there when we picked it up. A lot of them were sun faded, so we brought in Tim to kind of darken up some of the original painting, and then we just, we kind of wanted something company-like. So this is our right. company truck. This yeah, is as modern cool. as we get for a company truck. No, this is awesome, man. <laughs> so, this is really cool. So what's uh, the plan for this one? You're gonna put uh, So yeah, so you can see we have the Model 3 battery in the bed. Right. Um, that is gonna yeah. go underneath. And, and the Volvo skateboard? Yeah, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta have fun. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> I mean, right, What's right. the point of building electric vehicles, right? Right. Uh, so we're gonna put the, the Model 3 battery in the bed. Uh, up underneath, um, mm -hmm. tucked away pretty good. There's a lot of room in the single cabs. And then we're doing the small rear Model S motor in this one. The so small the, one. The, yeah, what we just called small motor. How come not the, um, uh, the, the, the large one, large drive unit? Well, for one, it would require a little bit of cutting. And right. we absolutely don't want to modify the okay. vehicle. Right. Uh, for two, you just don't need that much power. We've done a lot of these applications. Uh, we did a Manx the other day. Mm -hmm. And playing around with it, we ended up around 200 kilowatt peak output. Any more than that, uh, it, it's just too much. You right. can't, you get tire spin and, um, and it just doesn't really drive as well as they do when they're lower powered and you can get into the throttle and just feel more comfortable in the car. So, right. and I know like a, a lot of our customers sometimes get confused by that. Like, wait, you're putting this big unit and you're turning down the power. And it's, yeah, the, the unit was designed for a 5,000 pound car and you put it in this lightweight car and the throttle's like very responsive. So right. uh, the only flip side to that is really just turn down the power, detune it a little bit, you know, I it see. makes it more fun, still tons of burnouts and spinning the tires and all the fun stuff we like. Ooh. So, all right. Um, we have a little machine shop in here, a couple CNC's and some mills and stuff. Um, this is um, a technician's car. Is, and that technician's right here at right this there, computer, yeah. I think, right? Hey, what's up? <laughs> and he's going off to intern with Tesla this summer. He is, so oh, he's steal all their tell me more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I see you have a pretty cool bench set up here. What's this yeah. all about? So this is, uh, most of the, the stuff requires a little bit of modification before we get it in the car, usually a firmware flash, adjusting the regen. Uh, there's different software on the motors, so we want to match our controller to it. It's really a confidence thing. You've probably been through this. You're doing your stuff, and you're like, that first time you see something spin. So a lot of guys will want that experience, and they'll want to set it up and run it on the bench. Right. And we, we get them to that point right away out of the box because they get a, a video emailed to them of their motor, their serial number with their controller running on the bench. We run it through all the paces, right. check... Uh, you know, power output and the regen and all that. A lot of these guys are buying them on the internet. They don't even know to text if it's flooded or not. Some oh, guys God. pull these off. You're I mean, telling you've me. seen it, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, and so we've seen everything in between, everything right. from, you know, whatever inside. And you know, electrics, you get it running the first time, well, you've got years of reliability at that point. Um, this is so, our warehouse where we, so uh, where we do what you do. We take yeah. apart Teslas here. So we've got tons <laughs> right. of Tesla parts, tons of Tesla batteries, uh, you know, 30, 40 drive motors and, Backup battery stock, we got LG, Panasonic, Sony, you know, all, all the stuff. 
Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Hang out. All right. So what do we have here? This seems to be like the, the Volkswagen Audi. Yeah, group. yeah. So this is a '53 Baja Bug. Uh, excuse mm. the dust, by the way. We're kind of expanding, so we've been doing some work over here. Sure. Uh, this is a personal car. I actually uh, converted this with my dad. Oh, you, know, you did. This is, I think like my fourth or fifth personal conversion for myself. You know. Uh, I mean, you gotta do this for yourself, right? There's guys out there that you know want to do a conversion shop, and they're so focused on a customer car, uh, but you know they really want to see what do you want to do, what would you do? And so, uh, I've always loved Baja bugs, and um, so we put a twin motor in this because we wanted something super fast. And right. this thing just it hauls the groceries pretty good. Well, let me check we it. have a twin oh. HPBS AC50 system back here. And uh, again, it's oh, pretty dusty, this. but that's the way it should be. Yeah, no kidding. If it was too clean, there'd be an issue. Right. <laughs> but dust means you're not driving it. You gotta drive this thing, yeah. man. We've been driving it, man. It's been jamming around. We just took it to an off-road show. We added the trailer hitch so we can haul motorcycles on it now, and we can oh, haul our awesome. energy trailer, too. We have a little uh, uh, Bantam, a 1945 Bantam T3 trailer that we mm -hmm. have a 132 kilowatt hour Tesla battery in it. Oh, is it only this side? It's in our storage. We okay. have another facility across the street that's storage because we can't fit all our toys here. <laughs> but uh, the Sire Pook Pinsgauer over there yep. uh, is going to be our overlanding vehicle, and then that's going to run the... Uh, the trailer behind it for energy okay so cool. that way you get that way you have a, a source of energy to get out to the desert and then you can use the vehicle's battery to do all your overlanding while the energy trailer is recharging off a of solar or whatever form of energy you want nice idea. and then you hook it up and you get back you know so right. we, we want to give people the algorithm to go to the desert right go overlanding and off-roading all week and not have to worry about the charging running out of range right. range it's anxiety like the alta dirt bikes we made we took our power wall and right. made a very small version of that that we actually fit in the front of the tesla mino yeah and now we've got a eight kilowatt fast charger in the front of the tesla mino because right. you know we got these electric dirt bikes we we're going to the desert and then we were running honda generators Ah, right. And the famous uh, quote is, wow, this is the only dirt bike that makes noise when it's not running. Right. <laughs> uh, this is my daily. This is my 1965 double cab. Um, I electrified it about three years ago. I've got uh, just a touch over 40,000 miles on it now. Mm. Wow. 40, and yeah, it just goes and goes and goes. It's pretty fast. It's pretty fun. Uh, what's what's um, in it for power? In it's got, it actually has the same system as this, the twin AC50 system. Oh, so it does twins. about, you know, 280 foot pounds of torque, somewhere around there. That's pretty damn good. For uh, it's enough off. to break. Volkswagen transaxles. <laughs> I think it's well, on its third right then again, now. Anything yeah. really is. Anything so, like but the, um, the 63 single cab, that's our in-house test bed for our built-in Tesla system for the split windows, right? right. Because uh, everybody loves the split window and we wanted something where we could take the Tesla power and easily bolt it in, but still use the small battery because at the end of the day, uh, you don't want to be going fast in these. We no. want to build quick vehicles, but not necessarily fast. So. I see. Um, because quick's fun and quick's right. a little bit safer. Right. Uh, when your knees are the crumple zone, exactly. not a lot of people want to go fast. And so it's kind of this new, unique little like characteristic that we're trying to find in there. Right. So. And then driving these things fast without major suspension work really isn't an no, ideal. Not yeah. recommended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's the electric assist mm -hmm. motor yeah, right there, right? Electric assist right there. That's cool, man. At least you have seatbelts. Jehu have... doesn't have seatbelts on his. No. Well, I thought he put something on. No, he definitely didn't. I drove it yesterday. He definitely didn't. <laughs> uh, one of the kind of neat things. Oh, I love this. those. Yeah, we got the splitties. I don't know if you can reach over and grab that one. Okay, sure. Push a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And then when you open this over here, the diagnostic, like your RPM, your oh, temperature nice. displays, and air codes if they're ever present, anything like that. It's really important to keep it original. Yeah, no, I, I, any metal. I'm starting to think no. that's that's definitely that has to be the overall theme I'm seeing here. You kind of want to make it so that the cars can go back to stock, right? If if, right. if needed, you yeah. know, which is cool. The, you know, the whole goal here is to create a system that this car is like 60 years old, right? right? And nothing could be greater than having the same car, like say 60 years from now, yeah, still on electric drive, but all in its original condition, right. you know, um, and. There's going to be Wait, a are they, are they stealing that? What are they doing with that? <laughs> are they stealing that buggy? <laughs> right. So everyone here, one of the kind of unique things we do here is pretty much every technician here has their own personal project going on, right? right? You want people that are enthusiasts and uh, have their own projects because that's how you get your own ideas for stuff. And most of the learning um, we're doing on our own cars, right? Because right. no one's really an expert or a professional in this field because the conversion equipment with the lithium batteries have only been around for like four or five years now. Right. Um, and so 
everyone's new. And the best way to, to learn is to experiment. And it's not cool to experiment on customer cars. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> so we do. Definitely so not. we keep. You know, there's probably ten cars around the facility here. Maybe a few more than ten. Right. Uh, that are all company owned. That we're just doing. You know, it's kind of like our little smart wheelie car and all yeah. those little right. fun little projects. Uh, it's nice that we have platforms to experiment on. Oh, so. awesome. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that episode. Michael was a cool down-to-earth guy, and I enjoyed learning more about his operations. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, and hit that subscribe button because later this week, hopefully we can take a ride in his Tesla-swapped BMW M3. Stay tuned.